Welcome to episode 62 of Therese Talk. I'm your host, Therese Main. By day, I co-host a morning radio show on a network in New York and Pennsylvania. By night, I'm a podcaster. If you're a woman like me who just loves Jesus and wants to serve her family and her community a little bit better, you're in the right place. If you would, take a moment right now to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. My guest today is Renee Swope. She's just written a book called A Confident Mom. This book has three parts. It starts with your heart and then what your child needs most. Like your child needs to know the Bible is more than a story. Your child needs to know they're worth listening to. Your child needs to be disciplined in love. The third section is what your heart needs to know, that God is doing more than you can see, that what you do doesn't define you that God loves you and wants to be with you. And this book has been a labor of love now that Renee has kind of gotten on the backside of parenting. This is the book that I've wanted to write since the very beginning of like starting ministry 20 something years ago. But um, God told me to put it on, you know, I since Lord tell me not yet. And I mean, it's such a better book because I waited because now my kids are 27 and 24 and 13. So my experience, life experiences, like, are so much more. So, and then the concepts are very similar, like the, the truths, the biblical truths, but the stories and, re, and like application of them are, I love the book. I'm sorry. I've never loved anything I wrote. And I love this book so much. I mean, I am a doubter. I'm a self doubter. I'm a, like, I have never, I'm always have criticism for something I've written. <laughs> so this is so unusual for me, but I just has so much potential to encourage mom. So I have a 21 year old and a 20 year old. And now I'm like, man, I wish I could go back. I would do it so much. My, my kids would be so, I mean, they're awesome now, but my parenting would be so much more awesome. I would never lose my temper. I would turn, sure. I would turn every difficulty into a teachable Jesus moment. Absolutely. I, why, why does God wait to give us the wisdom that we need to do it right? And what are we my, supposed to you know do what? with it? My favorite chapters, really the most powerful lessons came out of the times that I blew it. Like one of the chapters is about how I wanted to punish my child so bad that he would never, ever bite again. Like I was going to take out, like, I mean, everything, like, I don't even know if I mentioned everything because I probably would have gotten in trouble, but like, I wanted to like ground him for a month and take away all his toys. But God like used the story of the prodigal son, like as I'm walking through the motions of it. And then there's another one where I yell at my kid and like we're learning in the middle of learning about kind words and he completely calls me out and says, mom, how do you expect us to learn how to use kind words when you don't even use them with us? Like those are my favorite stories. So because I feel like that's how I grew was what God did in me. I think, see, my, for me, this book is so much about like what God does in us. Do you, do you feel like that? That oh, like, for sure. Like your journey spiritually, and that's probably if we had kids or not, we're just growing like in our relationship with ourselves and other people. And, and so that's one of the things I love about the book too, because I know that's where moms are and I just want to give them hope. And this idea of confidence, which is such an interesting name, an interesting word to put in the title of your book, because it sort of makes you realize as a mom that, wait, I'm not the only one who's not doing this confidently. Right. Wait, other people don't, believe that they have it together. Why do we lack so much confidence when we know that God made us for this? Like he he took it upon himself to, you know, whether it's biologically to, you know, allow us to grow a child inside our bodies or to nurture them in a way that a mother can, only a mother can, but somehow we are like, oh, I'm definitely not doing this right. Why is there such a lack of confidence? I think it's because there is so much complexity to it. I don't, I can't think of anything in life that is more weighty than preparing another little per. Well, first off, they start off as a little person, so dependent on us, but they're emotional, they're physical, they're mental, they're spiritual. Like there's so much complexity to all the parts of their life. And it's so important. Like all of them are so important. And, and we're, we're not prepared. Like we can't take a class, an online course. I mean, we, I mean, sure there's courses, but like nothing can cover all of it. And then as soon as you kind of figure out the stage you're in, it changes, like they change. 
You know, there's so many stages of our children's development. And, you know, for me, my sake, and a lot of other people, like uh, some of us just weren't really mothered very much or, you know, didn't grow up in a home where we saw it saw like what we think and the Lord would want us to do. Like I just grew up in a non-Christian home with a single mom who wasn't home a lot. And, and so I didn't experience a lot of that. So I didn't really know what to pass, pass on or how to do it. Um, And I also feel like we think I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough spiritually. I'm not doing enough emotionally. I'm not spending enough time. There's always a not enough there. And I think the biggest problem is if we did enough, would we know it? Because we've never defined it. Hmm. There's a lot there. And then if you <laughs> if you do enough, is it too much? Because then your kids never grow to the point where they can fill in the gaps, which they eventually have to do. I mean, the goal is to make like capable adults, right? Yes. I mean, that's... hopefully more than capable, just like right. really like nice people <laughs> <laughs> who love Jesus. It's not too much to ask. Love no. Jesus and are, and love other people, right? And they're responsible mm-hmm. and honest and have integrity and kindness. You know, there's just a lot. I'm, You're putting a lot I'm, on the I'm, list. <laughs> uh, yeah. You just hope. I mean, I hope they're good humans that people, you know, are blessed to be around. That's, you know, that's part of my, my I, I, one of the things I talk about too is, you know, we look at like academic achievement and athletic ability and all these things we want our kids to accomplish. But when we focus in on character, like every child, no matter what their abilities are, you know, every child can reach their fullest potential if we'll focus on and on their character, on their heart. And I talk about that, like heart centered parenting, character focused parenting. And, um, but yeah, you know, for any mom that's listening, like none of us think that we're doing enough. Um, all of us struggle with mom guilt. I haven't met a mom who doesn't. Um, I don't know if dads do, but I just know moms do. Um, and, and that the, the way I became a confident mom was just by, I sense the Lord saying, I'm not looking for success or failure. I just want your faithfulness. I just want you to do the best you can with what you have, even if that means cooking frozen pizza or apologizing for yelling at your child today. That is faithfulness. Apologize and ask for forgiveness. And when I could lay my head on the pillow and say, you know what? I blew it, but I did the best with with what I could. And I went and I apologized and asked forgiveness. And I modeled for my child what that looks like. Then that was good. I'm going to call it a good day. Hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I I thought it was interesting that you brought up seasons and how, you know, you kind of master a season and then the next season comes, you know, these stages of parenting. One of the pieces, pieces of advice that I give moms who I meet is don't buy into the lie that you're missing something because a stage is over. You know, I think the enemy always loves to say to us, oh, what you're in now is not as good as what you were in, and it's not as good as what's coming in the future. Then when you get to the future, he tells you, oh, that season you just left, that was the best. You cherished it more. Right. Yeah. And, and we end up living with all of this regret, 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 and that there's something in every season season. You know, I mean, middle school, <gasps> there's something <laughs> in that season yeah. that is yeah. that is sweet and you miss it if you're too busy looking at what you don't have. And there mm-hmm. seems to be this concept of contentment, you know, and, and mm-hmm. that is I mean, the enemy loves to work in our discontent, you know, because it, yeah, it, he, it comes right. across that, you know, God has not given you what is best. You know, where you are in this phase with your kids is not the best. The job mm-hmm. that you're doing is not the best. Your house is not the best. It's this constant state of discontentment. And, and really that Contentment comes from just a close relationship with Christ. I mean, we have to get right. filled there first. So how do we right. balance that? Like, okay, what I'm feeling right now, is there something that I need to change or do I do I just need more Jesus? You know, <laughs> do yeah. I do I need yeah. to work on that relationship? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's crucial. I mean, I think you have named a really important topic, which is discontentment. Um, versus contentment, because I do think, and that's what I struggle with. That's what I look back on my parenting, that season of parenting when my boys who came first were like, you know, three, four, five through, oh, I wish I could remember when I kind of, kind of realized, okay, there's, there's a, a strategy going on here. And, you know, if you think about it, like, that's exactly what he did to Eve. 
hey, God's not giving you enough. Oh, right. he's holding out on you. Mm-hmm. And then he, you know, he talks her into to not trusting God. And then she's like, regrets, right? Oh, if I only had cherished what right. I had there. Um, this isn't as good as I thought it would be. So it's such a scheme. But I'm um, so good job calling him out. Um, and he wants us to miss out on what we're in the middle of. Every place that we're in the middle of, he just wants us to miss out. Because if we live in the fullness and fully present and savoring that moment as hard and, you know, as beautiful as it can be, then we're going to live in our fullness. You know, we're going to like be, when we show up fully as who we are, the best of who we are in Christ and us, um, like, like, I think our kids see Jesus in Mm. us you know, versus if we're discontent. I know for me in those seasons of discontent, I was always focused on everything except my kids. Like, oh, if Mm. I just had like a new couch or if I could just like spend time with my friends or if they just acted this way or, you know, Mm -hmm. instead of just savoring and being present in that moment. It's um, funny because we'll we'll all quote, you know, uh, count it all joy when you face trials. of, uh, But we look at the trials and we're like, oh, a trial is this. But nobody ever says like, count it all joy when you have a colicky baby. Or no one says, count it all joy when your middle schooler says a word that you can't even comprehend that they know, you know, or, or when, you know, your college student is deeply defiant, like no one says, count it all joy in this, but there, there is joy in those moments. It's just hard to find. How do we find that joy? Well, I think that the trial is there's no joy in the trial, you know, but we have to look for little what I call um, pockets of joy or joy deposits <laughs> um, all around it. Like I think, you know, and not just focus in on the trial. See, so I think we get consumed by just that trial and that's all we can see. And um, like, let me just give you an example. Um, when my son was 15, he told us he had decided he, he was an atheist, which as you can imagine, the bottom fell out in my husband and in my heart. It felt like it fell out. Now we didn't freak out in front of him, which I'm so grateful the Lord helped us not to do that. Um, but we did freak out later on alone in our closet together. So, um, but anyway, through this journey with him, um, he said some things that completely made me have a panic attack inside because I was like, oh my gosh, I hope you're not saying things like that at your Christian school. <laughs> but I felt like the Lord was like, don't criticize what he's saying but praise him for his honesty. So instead of saying, Andrew, blah, 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 you know, like you can't think that way or you can't this or Or you you can't think that way or you can't talk about God that way or you can't Mm -hmm. and saying like, I just said, I really appreciate your honesty. Like, thank you for being so honest. And so I think if we can, I have an analogy in the book that I share about mining for gold. And, and it's, I think joy comes when we look for those little specks of gold in the midst of all the dirt, because when a, a gold miner, you know, is, is looking for gold, they have to move through tons of dirt to find one speck or one ounce of gold, but they don't look for dirt. They look for gold. And the more they look for, the more they find. And so I think the trial, the, the, you know, defiant child, the, um, difficult middle school or the colicky baby, that's the dirt. That's the hard stuff. And I think, and God knows it. And it's okay for us to say, this is awful. But then to look in that baby's eyes, you know, or to look at their little nose and think about the miracle of them being formed. And um, just, just, just to look at that middle schooler and remember, you know, what they look like or before, or, or just create a funny moment, you know, mm-hmm. just do something fun together and count that joy. Right. Count that that joy. It's interesting. You bring up an issue um, with what you went through with with Andrew that Mm -hmm. I think we all feel like our kids are a reflection of us. But we kind of give ourselves too much credit because if like God is sovereign enough to cover mediocre parenting, you know, like you and I both grew up in a single mom working home and somehow we turned out okay and we work in ministry. So like God obviously can redeem, you know, I remember asking my mom what we were when I was a kid. What are we? I saw these kids going to religious ed. Like I so was craving God. And she said, oh, we're atheists. I remember that conversation. And I thought you just are born into what you are. This is what you are. And just grew up thinking that. And, and somehow God redeemed that because he's bigger than that. But, but still with this situation you went through with Andrew and it's like, don't say those things at your school because somehow that's a reflection of us. Like we forget that 
they're gods and he's got it. And that's exactly what I had to be. I was challenged with because I live in Charlotte. I was on staff with Proverbs 31 Ministries, which was like five minutes from his big Christian school right. where I knew everybody and they knew they, they knew me. And so when he first told us, I knew I have a choice. I can try to protect my reputation and what people might think about me or my son, or I can be vulnerable and honest about this. And if people don't give us grace, then that's not who we need to be around. I need to find leaders in Mm -hmm. ministry and Christians who are going to love my son and be a reflection of Jesus. So I had to make a choice and early, very early on in that journey, we, I decided we're not hiding this as long as he's okay. I won't share anymore, but you know, and he was, he couldn't care less. Um, and I just thought, I hope that by us being transparent and honest about this, it will help other parents who are walking through the same thing. And, um, and I had to make a decision like, I can't this, I can't take this on as, as my responsibility. My husband really struggled with feeling like a failure as a father and feeling like, what have I done wrong? Um, he's an incredible dad. It's just, Andrew was in a, you know, just, there's so many factors that led to his decision. Um, I think the most important thing though, in because I don't want to leave parents hanging, you know, we, it got dark. It was really, really hard. We had no idea what, was going to happen. Um, and there's addiction in my family. So I was afraid, you know, Andrew was going to just, you know, just lose all sense of moral wisdom. (laughs) Um, but what the Lord told us to do was not to talk about scriptures and push the Bible on them or take away YouTube or, um, you know, push church, there even came a point where he didn't want to go to church and we didn't make him, but we did church at home, you know, in a way that would be comfortable for him. So, but what God showed us was be who you say that I am, be patient, be with them. You tell them, I want to be with them, be with them, like turn off your phone, be with them and, and, and just get out of my way. Like, and the Lord, Andrew pursued, you know, learning more about atheism and a year and a half later, And there was a lot to the journey, but in a year and a half later, he told us, I'm just tired of living without hope. And so I want to give God a chance. I'm going to open my heart just a little, and I don't want to go to church and I don't want to hear sermons. And I don't want, I just want to read my Bible and see, I want to, if God is real, I want to know him personally and I want to see his face. And so he began on his own to pursue that. And what God did was miraculous. He ended up, um, giving his life to Christ and going to school and studying ministry to become a youth pastor. I think a lot of times kids who are raised in Christian homes feel like they don't have a big testimony story. It's like, Oh, I was raised in a Christian home. I accepted Jesus when I was in kindergarten, Sunday school. And, and this is my life, you know? And I think as Christian parents, sometimes we forget that, that our our children's salvation is their relationship with, with God. It is not their relationship with us. And as much as we can try to pave the way, we really need to clear the way and just let them have that. Because the worst thing I think that can happen is that we die and our kids go, I didn't really know God at all. I was just kind of riding my parents' coattails of faith. Right. Yeah. And he told me, he said, um, all those songs that you sang to us as little kids kept coming back. And I was so mad <laughs> <laughs> that Jesus loves me this. I know right. but Jesus loves like they just kept coming back. Mm. And like, and yet I know God used a mom. So tell other moms, you know, sing those songs and say those prayers because God did use them. And he said, but I needed to find my own faith and my own relationship with God so that when I left home, I could talk to him. I could lean on him and Mm -hmm. I could, you know, need him. And so I was, you know, at first I kind of panicked. And then I was like, I'm so glad this is happening while he is at home, Mm -hmm. not when he's in college. So I encourage parents like be a safe place. Don't panic. Don't criticize their thoughts and their questions. Actually be a safe place and say, that's a good question. I don't have that answer. I really respect you asking questions. Like they need to hear our language of adulthood Mm -hmm. because they're becoming adults and they're trying to prove to us they're not children anymore. And Mm -hmm. they're not. Right. And it's hard. It's very hard. But um, 
I just, I think our kids, especially growing up in Christian homes, I think we need to be the safest place to, our homes need to be the safest place to ask hard questions. It's funny. I just read that the kids say the coolest moms are the moms who are willing to talk about anything. And Oh, that's and, awesome. I'm a cool mom. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that it can just be whatever it is, like just have that conversation. And so there is something to that. I want to talk just a little bit about being honest in our struggles. Uh, you know, you went through that. We've seen Lisa Turkhurst go through that repeatedly. And and obviously there are lines where we don't like cathartically pour mm. every detail of every struggle that we've gone through. But there is something to not just saying, oh, I'm good. Everything is good. Because mm-hmm. that isolation that we go into kind of on our own. Like we do that to ourselves. It's like, oh, I'm struggling. I just, I'm not going to call anybody. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to talk to anything about it. And and it just reminds me of like how a wolf comes in to, to tackle a, you know, herd of sheep. He doesn't go for the whole herd. He tries to get one off onto the side, isolated, mm-hmm. and then just goes for the kill. And so we kind of help the enemy <laughs> by going, oh, I'm not going to, I'm just going to be over here by myself. And mm-hmm. that's not how we're meant to be. So how can we be honest without being a burden? And how can we respond well when another mom comes to us and shares like an actual real struggle, you know, mm-hmm. not about like my laundry bled, but like <laughs> something really big that's, that's going on. What was helpful for you? for me is just to be listened to, you know, just like, instead of wanting to fix or instead of thinking about what we're going to say next, (laughs) um, is just to be present with her, try to put ourselves in her shoes and imagine without any judgment, because all of us could be there wherever that person is. You know, I could be where Lisa is right now. Any of us could be, or she could be where I was like, it's just like, none of us have anything like, um, a corner on the market of anything. So I think just not being judgmental, being present, listening, and maybe not giving answers or advice, but saying like, how can I love you best where you are right now? How can I love you best here in this moment? And when we walk away from that moment, maybe leaving like, like, or uh, not leaving, but sending a little note, like a handwritten note that she could keep on her dresser, you know, not just a text, but something she could see or checking in on her too, maybe putting on a calendar, check back with, uh, because I think it's easier to walk away too and just get really busy with life. And if she's poured her heart out, that's really hard because she's now been really vulnerable and she has no idea what you've done with that information or if you even remember. I think it's really important to build friendships that before trials come <laughs> where we, le- we, we learn who we can trust. Like, I don't think we have 15 people that we can like tell everything to. Like I have two or three who I can like tell everything, you know, the ugliest, hardest stuff. But, and I don't like, so when I share Andrew's story, I don't share all the details, but I'll share some that still honor him and the details that he's okay with me sharing because I've asked him more than once. The details that are going to be helpful to another parent or to another teenager. Does that make sense? I want to share information that's going to help others, not just be bleeding on people. And, you know, and I think it's okay to be a burden to people, but not everybody. I think we also need to be comfortable being, I need, I, it's okay for me to be a burden to my best friend. God says, bear one another's burdens, mm-hmm. but I don't want to be a burden to 20 people who don't know me, you know, or 50,000 who read an email I wrote on Proverbs 31 devotion yesterday. You know? Renee Swope's latest book is called A Confident Mom. You can find it anywhere you buy books. If you've enjoyed this episode of Therese Talk, be sure to subscribe and look for the next episode on Tuesday morning. If you really loved it, consider making a gift to Family Life, the ministry this podcast is a part of. Just go to familylife.org and find out more about what we do. Did you know Family Life offers a variety of podcasts from news to kids to faith. You'll find a favorite on demand at familylife.org slash podcast.